Hello and welcome to the fourth video in my series on how elements react to a magnet. This video can be watched first, but if you haven't seen the first three, I suggest that you watch them in order. It will make more sense. Links are on the screen and in the description field under the video. In these videos I have shown you 60 different elements and now I've got my hands on five more. But before I reveal and test these, let me just summarize the technical terms that describe how an element can react to a magnet. For new viewers and the few of you that may have forgotten. When we played with magnets as kids, we learned that most things will not stick to a magnet, even some metals, while others will stick strongly to a magnet, like they were a magnet themselves. So, in our everyday life, we call things magnetic or non-magnetic. Our world is however not this black or white. If you test the non-magnetic materials in a very sensitive setup with a powerful magnet, some react to a magnet after all. This disc made of niobium is clearly attracted to the magnet, but it's weak and the disc can't be magnetized. This is called paramagnetism. Niobium is not strongly paramagnetic, so I use a powerful neodymium magnet to make it visible. Materials that are drawn powerfully to a magnet and can be magnetized in themselves are called ferromagnetic, like this chunk of solid nickel. But there's a third, rather surprising way of reacting. No matter what pole of the magnet I point towards this black piece, it is repelled by the magnet. This is called diamagnetism. This odd piece is formed in a process called pyrolysis and it is nothing but the common element carbon. Diamagnetic materials are not uncommon. The effect is usually just so weak that you don't notice it. Alright, let's test some new elements and see where they belong. First up is ruthenium. This metal is part of the exclusive platinum group with six rare, dense, corrosion resistant and expensive metals. Ruthenium is not widely used, but it is one of the most effective hardeners for platinum and palladium. Even in thin layers, such alloys are strong enough to coat electrical contacts that need to resist a lot of wear. Palladium ruthenium alloy is for example used in low current relays, where closing forces are high. Let's see if we can spot a reaction when a magnet is put near this tiny 1 gram sample. Well, it is attracted to the magnet, but only weakly, suggesting that it is paramagnetic. This fits well with the official value for ruthenium, paramagnetic with a low value of plus 39. The next element is tantalum. This is a very important element. It is widely used in tiny capacitors in electronic equipment like mobile phones and computers. Tantalum is chemically very inert due to its resistance to corrosion, even from acids, plus a very high melting point, it is also used for crucibles. Time to test it against the magnet. Tantalum is definitely attracted to a magnet. It is paramagnetic with a value of plus 154. From the very inert tantalum, let's go to a much more reactive element. Barium is so reactive that it has to be stored under mineral oil. If this metal touches water, a lot of explosive hydrogen gas will be formed, so I have to be careful with the water bath. Barium doesn't have many common uses. One of the more special and interesting to me is the yttrium barium copper oxide, the first high temperature superconductor. Superconductors are fascinating, they put the cool in being cold. Okay, looks like I'm ready to test barium versus a magnet. Here we go. Not exactly a massive reaction, but it is attracted. This is as expected since barium is paramagnetic with a low value of plus 20.6. Now, barium is quite reactive, but this next element is way worse. Potassium is a very lightweight metal. Of the metallic elements, only lithium is less dense than this. 
Potassium is so light that it will float on water, which is quite unusual for a solid piece of metal. However, it is best known for being so reactive that it can explode when put on water, due to the generated hydrogen gas. Sometimes it even leads to something called a Coulomb explosion, according to recent studies. This sample is stored on a mineral oil but still looks very corroded. The yellow-orange patches are probably a mixture of potassium oxides. Potassium is very soft, so even plastic tweezers can scrape and dent the metal, revealing the shiny metal underneath. Okay, a water bath with naked potassium floating on it is really a bad idea. So, instead I have to put it in a watertight plastic bag and use a bigger boat. This is not ideal and I had trouble detecting any reaction in the setup. Except from eddy currents being generated in a potassium when I move the magnet too fast. Potassium is quite a decent conductor. But it is clearly not ferromagnetic. Potassium is actually a little paramagnetic, with a value of plus 20.8. The final element is one of my favorites. Iridium is such an interesting metal. It is the second densest of all natural elements, only slightly less dense than the record holder osmium. They are twice as dense as lead. In other words, this is heavy metal, and I'm a fan of that. But iridium has other fantastic properties. It is considered to be the most corrosion resistant metal. Gold is also known for being very resistant to corrosion. That's why it is often used in thin layers on connectors. The electrical connection will stay good for a long time when the connectors don't corrode. Still, aqua regia will dissolve gold and platinum, but for iridium, a bath in this mixture of acids is just like a nice swim in water. Very few chemicals affect iridium. It even has a high melting point and of all metals, it is the only one that will stay strong in air above 1600 degrees Celsius. All of these skills makes it perfect for encasing red glowing plutonium dioxide. This is used in the so-called RGDs that are sort of advanced batteries for space probes. So I find iridium quite impressive. Let's see how it reacts with a magnet. It is attracted to the magnet, so this is also paramagnetic, with a value of plus 25. All elements in this video have reacted quite similar, so let me finish off with a diamagnetic reaction you can try at home if you have a strong neodymium magnet. Water is weakly repelled by a magnet. Look at this ice cube running away from the magnetic field. Nice, but it is time to say goodbye. Thanks for watching, and remember to click like if you did like.